Ryan, first of all, thank you so much. Thank you for you guys being here. It's a pleasure. Like I said, always I said that um, in the beginning of the chat, I talked that with uh, Professor Tom and Amir all the time. Um, we're doing this to give some sort of like uh, extend, uh, extension for our community, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu family. Um, everybody around there, it's more than welcome. Uh, we're trying to bring uh, people we're trying to bring friends. We're trying to bring everyone. Oh, look at Tom. That was a great one, Nacho. You see what you did it? <laughs> <laughs> so it's always a pleasure to have some somebody like your caliber here um, for the audience, you know. Uh, and this time, um, I, I, I highly notice that a lot of people are having difficulties, you know, with many things. But one of the things that cannot have difficulties is understanding that uh, we're trying to extend our knowledge, our words, whatever we know through people that are out there, you know, and thank you for you being here. Thank you for uh, sharing your knowledge. Uh, I'm a big fan of judo. I don't know if ever Tom told you that or Professor Amir, uh, big fan of judo. I actually started judo as I was a five. I was very hyperactive kid. Um, and until this day, I, do not just watch videos, but I try to emphasize at least once a week at the dojo, starting the training, standing up. And uh, no matter the background that you have, uh, as far as mixed martial arts, as far as martial arts, once a week, we're going to start in our feet, you know, because uh, like uh, we are playing this and the other day, nobody's starting to do beating ball in the middle of the street. Nobody's starting to do 50-50 or go to your foot like in the middle of the street, you're going to get punched in the face. That's what Carson used to preach to my professors. And that's basically what I preach to my students. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is a self-defense way of living, you know, and you're not going to throw like yourself on the floor and okay, let's fight. No, you got to know how to put the hands on the person and have you here. I think is just going to enhance like our knowledge and I'll let you be free for um, any type of tips of uh, grips, any type of uh, tips of uh, posture, and it, especially in jiu-jitsu, most of the guys, they looks like, they looks like, I don't know how, if I'm going to say it right. So I, I apologize for my English. Uri Geller, there has a guy that used to get like forks and stuff and kind of like bend it. So jiu-jitsu guys, they tend to like to start and fight like this. And I, I, I can't understand, like when you become like 60s, you're going to probably like be looking at your feet. You got to be straight up. So those are the things that I try to uh, emulate when I watch judo matches, when I watch uh, my colleagues that does judo, I teach that for the kids. I teach that for the teens, you know, the adults as well. So I just want to start off with your thoughts about it. Like as far as like the importance of the fight, gr the grip fighting, the importance of standing up gaming through, you know, people that does jujitsu. I want to know your thoughts. I want to navigate in your brain on that part. Well, first off, thank you guys for having me. I love this piece of it, man. You know, I retired in 08, so coaching is where I get that excitement back. And I love sharing what I know. But, you know, for me, judo, I was a stand-up guy. I would throw everybody, but we hit the ground and I would stand right back up. So it gives me a chance to learn my ground game from all you, you, you know, you beasts out there. So I appreciate it. Um, but I'm glad you brought that up because everybody, when I come to do clinics, they want to know the coolest move they've seen on YouTube which is great, you know, and they're low percentage moves, but that's what everybody wants to learn. And they don't understand just like jujitsu, you know, a lot of times I'll say like building a house, you put up, you put up the foundation, you put up the walls and then you get that hot tub and the big TV, but I can't get that stuff without the, the base first. Right. Um, and that's what I always try to show on all my clinics. So today that's what I was looking at doing was, Hey, first thing you got to do is grips. I can't throw you if I don't have my hands on you, number one, but also in, optimal positions to be offensive, to be defensive if I need to be. Um, and then I can move on to the next step, which is Kazushi or off balance. Um, and posture is a big thing too. I know we're probably what you guys fight the most standing as wrestlers and they do have that bent over posture. Um, and as long as I have my grips on and we'll kind of go over that in a minute, then I can fight those guys and, and not be afraid to stand up. Because like you said, if I'm bent over and my head's over my toes, I'm very unathletic. I can't lift up my feet. I can't move very well. I can only do one thing, and that's try to squash you or use my strength. 
And that only lasts so long in a match, you know? So I'm glad you brought that up. Um, the two things, first two things I'm going to talk about. So, um, and I'm here for you guys. So stop me at any point, anybody, if you have questions, man, I'm, I'm here for you. So I don't want to just blow smoke, you know, talk, talk about what I want to talk about if nobody gets anything out of it. So, so let's, uh, like I said, as you have questions, let me know, but let's start with grips. Okay. So when we talk grips in, in judo or jujitsu, uh, the, these three fingers, the bottom three are the most important for grips. Okay. So I'm from Texas. So we went fishing a lot and it's just like a fish hook, right? These are my fish hooks. And then just like when you get a bite, you set that fish hook. So these three, and I say like you're shooting guns cause I'm from Texas. So you want to make sure these are really tight and you're either holding an egg or you're shooting guns. Okay. And then you also, we're going to, I'm going to show you on my wife here. As a matter of fact, thank you so much, ma'am, for being here, Mr. Reyes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So the most important part with grips is you don't, a lot of people, they're uncomfortable on the feet. So the first thing they do is just put their hands wherever they can because they, it's a safety blanket. Okay. And that's okay. But again, I can't be offensive and I can't be defensive. So when you grip, you have to be very strategic about where you put your hands. Um, I basically want one on one side to, to um, secure one side of the body and one on the other. So typically it's going to be if my left foot's forward, left hand on, on the lapel. I don't want too high because I can't move and I don't want too low. So you want to place your knuckles on their uh, collarbone. <laughs> sorry. Knuckles on the collarbone and then I'm going to tilt my wrist up and that's going to create that fish hook. Okay. It's nice and tight when I need it. Okay. Now if I'm right foot forward, obviously my right hand is going to go on lapel. On the other side, we're going to create, we're going to secure this sleeve. Instead of, I know this is a popular grip in jujitsu and it's illegal in judo, but it's also not very really good for throws because there's a lot of slack. So if I go to pull her off balance, her gi moves before her arm does. So for judo, um, again, you're going to use these bottom three fingers and there's a crease on the bottom of the gi. And that's where I want to try to place it. It's between the elbow and the wrist. Okay. I'm going to grab that three fingers on that crease and I'm going to turn my thumb down. It tightens up the sleeve. Okay. So again, one hand on lapel, one hand on the sleeve, fingers on that crease and down. Okay. Now I can move, I can pull, push. And if she's a, we'll stand up. If she's a wrestler and I'm standing straight up and she goes to take a shot, if I don't have hands on, I'm going to get hot. Right. Or if I have hands on the sleeves, even she can still come in. If I have one hand on the sleeve, one hand on the lapel, as she comes in, I can use it like shocks on a car to create that, uh, that proximity from my partner, right? So I can kind of move them as I need to. And that's the importance. I don't want to just put them anywhere. I want one hand on one side, one hand on the other. Okay? So that's basics of grips. I can't do anything before I put my hands on and I need to have strong grips. Now I don't want strong muscles. Okay, when I'm grabbing, I'm not flexed the whole time. My grips are strong, but my hands should be able to move. Okay, I should be able to move my hands. Strong with here, and I should be able to move my hands. If not, you're gonna wear out your forearms, and you're not gonna last very long, okay? So next is posture. Like, like you were saying, um, if I'm bent over, okay, I'm not very, I'll do it out here. If I'm bent over, I'm not very athletic, okay? I, my heads are over my toes. I can't really lift up my legs. I can't move. So the first thing is going to be straight up posture. And I don't have to stand super straight, but I want to bend my knees a little bit. And I'm on the balls of my feet. Okay. I want to be the right foot forward, left foot forward. I never want to be even because I'm off balance easily. And I never want to be too far. Okay. I should be able to lift my feet up. It's almost like you're dancing. Okay. Next thing is I want to lift my opponent in the eye. If I, if I look down at my feet, because most people are worried about where their feet are moving, so they look down and it pushes my butt out. And then I'm in that bad position. So I was going to keep my eyes straight up on my opponent, balls on my feet, hands up, okay? And then grips. And now I can move where I want to move. Even if she's stiff and bent over, I still stand up. Because now I can move 
if she's a little bit stiffer, it's harder for her to move. Okay, so those are the basics of those two. Um, and I was gonna show just the easiest, but one of the most effective moves tonight, a foot sweep. Just because a lot of people, they don't like to turn their back. You know, especially wrestler, I mean, not especially, anybody. It's not a natural movement for me to turn my back to my opponent, because if I miss, I can choke. <laughs> I can get choked, I can do stuff like that. So um, as much as I like to use big power throws, Foot sweeps are a lot better because it's using their reaction and it's like they slip on water. Plus I can do a thousand of those in a, in a match and not get tired. If I do a big fireman's carry, I can do one or two and it blows my muscles out and it makes it difficult. So I figured we'd go a little bit different tonight with just a, a normal foot sweep. Okay, so I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show the basic foot sweep and then we can show drills or whatever questions you guys have. Okay. So again, I'm going to show right foot forward, hand, one hand lapel, one hand on the sleeve. Okay, so this isn't where I need to get my partner to move strength wise. I'm not pushing or pulling because it's not going to work. They're going to be nice and stiff because they don't want to stand up. So I'd rather let them think it's their movement. Okay, if it's a natural reaction to their body, they're going to be a little bit less strong. Okay, they're not going to be as stiff. So, first thing I'm going to do, just like in boxing or any kind of fighting, if, if I'm here in front of her and I change the angle, she's going to change the angle with me. Because if she doesn't, if I step here and she doesn't move, I'm going to knock her out. I'm going to throw her. So naturally, she's going to mirror my reaction. Okay? So here, I'm gonna take a step around, I'm gonna pull, and I'm gonna pull. The importance of right foot forward with the left hand on the sleeve is when I do throw her, I step around, and when I do throw her, I can keep this in the air. That way, I don't wanna throw just to throw, because if I let go, she's gonna roll back, and get back up, okay? So as I sweep, I'm gonna keep this up. So I can go knee on belly, I can go on arm bar, or I can go other moves. No. So the basics, let's talk the basics. So now that was the basic move that I showed you, that I wanted to show you with the step around. But let's break down the foot sweep. Because if I don't show you how to correctly do a foot sweep, you're probably gonna do that piece wrong. So, first thing with the foot sweep, stand nice and straight, okay? Now I'm gonna keep my toes, my toes are gonna drag, my pinky toe, drag along the mat as long as possible, okay? So you won't see me lifting my leg like I'm hacky sacking, okay? I don't wanna do that, I don't wanna lift up my leg. I wanna extend it along the mat as long as possible. So I wanna slide my pinky toe, long as possible. When I do that, my head goes backwards so that I get more power from my core. Okay, here, slide. Now, in order to do that, my front foot has to open up. Okay, if both my feet are faced towards you guys and I try to sweep, my, my uh, thighs are gonna hit each other and I'm not gonna have any room. So just like a Muay Thai kick or any kicks where you're kicking across your body, you're gonna open your front foot up so I have room, room to sweep. Okay, open your front foot, slide your toes across the ground, head goes backwards. And then the last piece is your arms. So we have one arm, one arm here, one arm here. It's like you're turning a bus. Okay, I have to off balance you. So as I catch your foot and I'm sweeping, I'm gonna turn the top part of your body. Okay. Anybody have, you guys have any questions? I don't, I know not a lot of people have partners, um, but I just want to make sure kind of any questions you had. That's awesome, Ryan. We do have a couple of questions going back to the initial posture. Uh, that you, Greg is wondering if that same posture applies to no gi as it does with gi. It does. Yeah, I, 
I think it does. Um, instead of, you don't have to take it off. So with no gi, you obviously won't have a, you won't have the gi part to grab onto. But again, I don't want to be here because I'm still less athletic than I would be if I was able to shoot in. Because once you're here, all you can do is shoot forward. If I am going to attack, I need to stand up first, and it kind of gives him a tell that I'm coming in. Okay, so that's why I always like to stand up here because I can explode to many different movements without showing him that I'm coming in. So with no gi, instead of grabbing here and here with the gi with uh, the sleeve and lapel, I'm gonna you basically use the bones either on his el her elbow, his elbow, or his wrist, and I'm gonna make a C with my hand. That's why it's super important that you train grips super strong. It's easy with a gi. If they're all sweaty, they don't have a gi on, all they have is a rash guard, you need to be able to grip strong with that. So I always make a C with my wrist, and I either slide it to the bottom where her, where her wrist bones, so I can pull, or behind her elbow. And that's controlling this side. Now the other side is either gonna be an underhook under this arm, Okay, or an overhook. Okay, an underhook's pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna hook under, I'm grabbing the meat of her shoulder, and then that way I can cause her to move as I want without using muscle. If I go underneath, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna flex my wrist so that it's on her shoulder. Okay, so it's the same thing. Now I have the same, pretty much same idea, but without a gi top on, okay? Or you can also grab if you want behind the head. Cool. Okay, great question though, Greg. Thank you, sir. Oscar is wondering, uh, when you have that initial grip, so you have a lapel and sleeve control, do you have a preferred way to stop someone that is taller than you from pulling guard? Huh, be first. <laughs> That's uh, so for me, it, it matches my judo mentality. Um, I'm going to run the pace of the match instead of allowing them. So once we bump this and I put my hands on, I'm not standing still. If I'm standing still, tall or short, it doesn't matter. He's going to be able to work his game and figure out what I'm doing. Um, so for, from the get go, as soon as I slap hands, I put both my hands on where I want, I'm moving. I'm either attacking your feet, I'm pulling your head, I'm making you worry about everything else except for what I want to do. So it's hard for them to pull guard if I'm constantly on the move and I'm pulling and pushing and making them worry about what my next throw is. I mean, it's hard. When they pull guard, if you're standing still, there's not much you can do. So I just say be, be active. Awesome. All right, Robbie's asking, uh, reference the sweep that you just did. Do you have any tips for that sweep from the opposite stance? He has trouble turning the wheel on the collar on the other side. So I think he's made in left, lefty versus righty, I think. So, I think so, and Robbie, if I'm wrong, please jump in and let us know. So I'll, sh I'll show you the opposite side. Um, yeah, lefty versus righty, perfect. So I'll show you the opposite side, and that's actually my bread and butter because I'm a lefty by, by trade. And I, I, most people I thought were righties. Um, that piece of it, it's going to be more timing with your feet. Okay, the upper body is more of an afterthought. A lot of people think, you know, I have to do this, and I have to move them and then sweep. It's actually creating that reaction and then catching their foot, and then I can turn. If I don't hit that foot the right time, I don't care how strong you are. You can turn as much as you want upper body, but it's not going to work. Okay? So it's really getting your partner to react. So I'm a lefty. She's a righty. So same thing. Now the first movement with this foot, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to go too far out. Because a lot of people, they'll go too far out, and then I can't catch it. If she turns here, I can't catch it, and I'm, and I'm too weak to turn a so if we're lifting weights and I have a hundred pound weight and it's right close to my body, it's easy to move. If it's out here, it's a lot harder. So that's the first thing is I don't want to be too far out from my opponent. Um, my judo game was typically within a foot because now I can feel your body. I can actually move your body. So that's the first thing, okay? 
First thing is not being so far out, being a little closer. And I'm actually going to turn my foot. A lot of people, they'll come here, and then they'll start to turn, and it's already too late, and their foot's planted on the ground. Okay, so in order to kind of alleviate that, my first step is turning towards her body so that now I can beat her foot down. Okay? Oh, and another thing. Sorry. <laughs> As I'm gripping, I'm kind of remembering stuff. Um, your lapel grip, you should try to be underneath their arm. So let's go a little closer. So if I am a lefty versus a righty, and we're both fighting for lapels, and I come over, it's easy for her to just straighten out, just post her arm like this. Straighten out her arm, should not let keeps me away from her. Okay, and there's not much I can do to break that elbow down. You're pretty strong from here. So I want to be underneath. So that I can kind of lift that elbow up, get a little closer, and then I can. Okay, again, far out versus closer. Okay, so hopefully that answered the question. We have a, another question coming in from Cooch here. He's wondering, besides grip trainers, what do you do for grip strength training? Uh, grip trainers are great, and I he had some at. His house that I saw too, the little rubber things, those are awesome and so are the, um, the metal ones, I guess. But everything I do in the gym, um, I throw a gi on it because there's nothing better, especially for this, than you know, pull-ups with a gi. I'll do rows with a gi, um, even the pull. I mean, everything I do, it's, it's a weighted with a gi on it or some type of uh, variation. Now they even have gis that are, it's like a rope but it's gi material so that you're climbing up. I mean, I think the two most important muscles for judo or BJJ arguably is grips and core. So those are the two that I work pretty much every time I do anything. It's grips and core, and then I'll hit whatever body part I'm trying to work with. If your grips give out, you, you can't turn your core to do the throw, then um, you can have the biggest biceps in the world, and it's not gonna help you. Oh yeah, farmers carries too, and there's all kinds of good stuff. I'll, I'll send coots and stuff. Oh, send it to me too, because now I know why he has strong grips, Professor. There we go. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm wondering why he has this freaking Colossus grips on my geese sometimes when I roll with that guy. Uh, I found this. <laughs> send it to me too, Professor, not just to him. Remember, Miami, okay, or you know. I got you, I got you, doctor. Uh-huh, I'm watching you. Uh-huh, watch. <laughs> Third, third place in the world. This guy's a G. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Um, Matthew has a question here. Matthew, if you could hear, if you could uh, just unmute yourself and uh, ask that question, just so I ask, or you, it's conveyed properly here. I think we lost Matthew. Yeah, I think he, we lost him. Um, um, well, we'll save that question when he gets back then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Go ahead through the list because I have my own list that I'm, <laughs> that I'm formulating. <laughs> what is your best setup for a fireman's carry with a geek? Oh, great question. Fireman's was actually, before they changed the rules, you can't grab legs anymore for judo. Um, I had one that I would catch a lot of people with. Um, not being cocky, but that was kind of my bread and butter. So um, being a lefty, so I'll show you lefty versus righty because that's how I set mine up. I do a variation of a fireman instead of a traditional where I come here. I do it by two grips, but. Oh, I know what you're talking about. That was a good one. Okay, so the way I set mine up is I do it from a cross grip. So my right hand is gonna grab her arm and I'm gonna pull it across. From here, I'm gonna grab the lapel, and I'm gonna turn my elbow to the sky. You look all over there, there you go. <laughs> elbow to the sky so it's nice and tight. So my arm's going down and the elbow's going up. See, that secures this side of the body. The problem is, she's too extreme, so I can't get in, okay? So for me, I'm gonna fake a forward throw. Ooh, she's gonna step around. All right. 
Don't break her, Professor. Don't break her. We only have her right now, please. We need her. We need her. <laughs> so regardless, anytime fireman, you're going to have to get the angle. Okay, so uh, keep it nice and neutral. If they're nice and neutral, it's easy, either side. But they're going to be one side or the other. So no matter what it is, you've got to get that front foot back. you got to get them to react. Okay? So again, all I'm going to do, I'm going to knock it out of the way. She's going to step back. And I'm gonna Okay, it's it's getting them to react and think that they're safe from the first move. Step out. Now you go to your second move. Okay. You good? Yeah. Professor Tom has a bunch of questions for you, but before I turn turn you yeah. over to him, uh, reference the fireman's throw there. I don't want you to finish it on camera, but if you could just walk us through it. Are you pulling with the arm or are you throwing your whole body or what's, what kind of movement sequence there? Yeah, great question. Um, I actually came up with that because uh, for, I was a 73 kilo, 160 pound player and I was tall for my weight, so I wasn't the strongest. And I'd come up with a lot, against a lot of Mongolians, Russians, stronger guys that I couldn't do the traditional firemen because they were, they're strong. So for me, just like you said, uh, it's actually a body weight throw. So I could do it a hundred times and not waste any, any muscle. Um, I'm actually, so once I get my grips correctly, okay, I'm putting pressure on her forward. Once I knock this out, I'm basically, I'm head underneath, I'm tying her to my body and I'm falling to my hip. And that way, instead of using strength, she has to fall because it's 160 pounds, as long as I'm tight, falling to the ground. So I'll do it without her. Okay? Here and here, I'm gonna knock this out of the way. This knee's going to the mat. This leg's actually posted out. And from there, it's thrown up. Okay, and you can either hook, I can either hook the front leg I can either hook here, that's what I usually do, because if I try to, to catch it, a lot of times they can step out and I miss, step backwards, right? And I miss it. So actually, I come here so that I don't have to reach it. And then that, that helps me when I fall, I can throw it in the air. Okay, it's just an extra like rubber band to throw. Good question. That was so beautiful. That was like <laughs> prime. You don't know how much smile you put inside, outside of me, Professor. <laughs> well, thank you. Game changer right there. Well, I'm talking about myself, you know. I'm a, I, I always vote for, like, you know what? If you're going to pull guard, make sure you have a great guard, have a great leg. But regardless, the moment that the fight stand up and you in the disadvantage, Guess what? The guy that's going to be on top and put in that pressure and knows a little bit of judo, if it's not a little bit, a lot, because he likes to search, you're going to be falling behind. And I tell you the tremendous amount of conditioning that judo gives, of course, allows you to keep up the pace of the fight. I think that's one of the main reasons that you mentioned at the beginning of the chat. You like to keep the pace. You like to keep the fight going. I think that's what we're made for, right? I mean, competition, training, you want to push the pace. Yeah, you don't want to break your partner. You wouldn't want to break your partner. You don't want to break your teammate. But you want to keep pushing that pace so that energy, that pace comes back to you. I think that's a totally game changer. That specific move, I think it's, it just blew up my mind. Uh, the, the detail that you come with the hand outside of the knee, that was like I always chasing that leg. And sometimes you can because if the guy, if the person step out, you cannot. But having the hand outside, man, that's a game changer, Professor. And like you said, it's true. You want to push that pace. You want to keep moving forward, you know. And if the guy sits down, stand up again, you know, come back up and call the fights to stand up. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I, you just like blew my mind. Thank you so much. Of course. Well, and you're right because they can only defend for so long before they make a mistake. I mean, that's my whole thinking. That's why I, I know it's that old adage of, you know, don't train 
10,000 kicks, different kicks, train one 10,000 times. And I agree with that very much. You should have your bread and butter. But I practiced every throw from every direction because I wanted to be able to be, hey, this didn't work. Now I'm here. Now I'm up top. Now I'm below. So they don't have an answer because if you only have two moves, then they can, they can come up with a plan against you. Mm-hmm. you know? no point. If they don't know what you're doing, they're going to fall apart. And for me, doing jiu-jitsu, I, I'm not good at – I'm not good at, you know, getting through guard and all these different things, but so I don't want to do that. I want to throw you in a position where I can not, you know, already land in side guard or land in a better position. I don't have to fight through your legs, you know? So I think that's a big advantage as well is not having to do that things if you don't need to. Correct. So, uh, Ryan, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going with, you touched on a couple of things. Uh, so do you, I don't want to get, I don't want you to go too deep into all of it, but do you have favorite sequences that you like to set up? So I know the more we get into jujitsu, right? We're like, all right, we're, we're, most of our initial moves are really to get you to expose what we really want. Um, you know, when we're white belt or blue belt, maybe we're, we're doing the move we know in that position. So we're going for the choke and everybody sees it and we're like, ah, that choke failed. Same thing with your, your takedowns. You're, you're saying your foot sweeps and even your, you know, fireman's carry. You, you set it up like that. Do you have other things or do you recommend certain things for these guys um, to say, you know, say a foot sweep is, of course, one of my favorite things as well. Uh, yep. how, do you, how do you set that up to get the move you really want? And what are some of those things maybe? Perfect, yeah. Um, any, I mean, really any judo that you'll see nowadays, nobody just steps in and blasts a forward throw. I mean, there's a few phenoms and that's fantastic, but – it's combinations. It's one, two, or three combinations in order to get to that final throw. Um, and I think in order to have B, you need to have a strong foot sweep, right? So, so usually what I'll do in my first few matches or first minute with somebody is I'm not going all out. I mean, yeah, I want to finish the match. So if I see an opening, but um, as I'm hitting those foot sweeps, I'm hitting the blocks, you know, a, a trip from the front, um, inside, outside, I'm kind of seeing where they're weak, but I'm also getting in the head a little bit that, uh-oh, he's got some dangerous feet, so I better stand up a little bit. Because if you can get them to respect your first move, it opens up your second move, you know? So um, depending what foot's forward is is usually which one I attack. Okay, again, if I'm the lefty, if I stand up with my left and she stand up with her right, then I'm always attacking this, whether it's a foot sweep here or whether it's a block, I get them to step forward, block, just a stutter step to get them thinking about one, and I'm actually swinging them to the second, okay? So I can block with this foot. She's worried about that throw, and that throw. Okay, so I'm usually worried about A, so I can set up B. So I would just say, kind of like jujitsu, man, um, try different things, have one or two, have a foot sweep, have a block from the front, play with those to see what positions you get in. And then we can come up with a secondary throw that you can, you can go for it from there. Cause that's all you really need is one or two throws off of one or two setups. And then you could be really dangerous. Yeah. I, I like that a lot. Um, going back, uh, just touching on a couple of things you said, you said, I, I obviously understand why this is not a good grip from standing. But you said illegal in judo? Is they just made it legal. It used to be illegal, yep, right here. Uh-huh. Um, they, they think of it as more of a defensive move because you can't do much from their standing. So a lot of guys, if you're getting out gripped, that they would come here and they'd hold it down and they wouldn't try to attack. We call it a cat's paw, and all they would do is defend here so that they wouldn't have to stand up and fight you. So they basically said, hey, we don't see that as a very um, strong move because you got to figure most of your forward throws, I'm going to have to turn my arm. Let me back up a little bit. I'm going to have to turn my arm forward. So that's why this is pretty advantageous. Basically, it's like you're holding a frying pan, you're gripping here, and then from there, I can turn it and look like read a wristwatch. Okay, it's a a lot stronger motion than pulling this way when I can turn my wrist, okay? And, and also, at the bottom of the key, you just can't do very much. So they kind of made it illegal for the defensive aspect and that you can't do much from there. Okay, that, that's interesting. 
And so you're saying it's now illegal. They, they made it recently illegal. They made it illegal. Now they basically just, man, judo's ever changing uh, depending on the day. So now you can do it as long as you attack within like five seconds. As long as you're active with it, then you can attack. So they're getting a little bit smarter about their rules. I feel like if you have both, like that's one of my favorite things is if I have both of those, I could do a drop Saranagi and right. I don't have hands to touch. Yep. And I agree. It, you, that, you know, they got rid of leg grabs because they said it's defensive, but it's one aspect to it. Same thing. If you're grabbing both of them and you're holding somebody down, it's hard for them to attack. But if you're active with it, it it's a very effective. Okay. Um, the, so my, my last biggest question is, is a lot of times in jiu-jitsu, they're, they're folded in half, like, like he talked about, like you talked about, and they stiff arm because they're afraid, right? Yep. Do you have particular angles, directions, things you like to do to, to kind of compensate or overcome that maybe one stiff arm that they're going to try and, try and do? Yep. Um, the biggest piece, and I'll kind of show you some, a few of the movements, but the biggest piece is I don't want to give them something to push on. So if I'm standing square up to them and my chest is square up and they have their hands here, it's easy for them to use that. Now, if I can turn the angle, then it's harder for them because they don't have a space to push on. All of a sudden it turns here or here and then they're at a, a disadvantageous position because they were pushing on you. Now their arms are one way or the other and I can use that to my advantage. Um, so that's the first piece. So here's. So again, she's, whether both hands are on, either way, if I'm broad shouldered, she can block, okay? Once I turn here, now her body's already starting to move. And I can use it to my advantage to throw. I can use it to my advantage to throw. Okay, I just don't want to give them that big space. So it's turning one way or the other. And same with the sleeves. Okay, if she has one sleeve on, it doesn't matter. It is turning your body. Okay, to get away from it. Now the second thing, and I just showed this to Lauren the other day, is I want to use that stiff arm to my advantage. So say she is stiff arm me, me and I can't get away from it. Okay, I'm actually going to pick that one off. I'm going to use this to my advantage. A lot of times when they're here and it's working, they don't want to give up and they'll hold on for dear life. So all I'm going to do, I'm coming up and over. Uh, switch feet. Okay, up. Over around the behind the leg, and here. Okay, if you can't break it off, because a lot of judo is breaking grips. Okay, but we've been doing it for years, and it's easy for us. So if you can't break, that'd be my first move. If I can't, I'm going to turn my body, elbow to elbow, behind the leg, and I'm using my arm to take out her leg. Okay, so again, it's just not standing still in front of your opponent. It's moving, it's creating different positions so that your body's not ready to throw. That, that's actually really awesome because we teach that in like self-defense classes where people grab your wrist, right? They grab you and kind of like rough you up and take you somewhere. Yeah, that swim around, that's really great. Um, now, I notice a lot of people that know judo tend to, tend to kind of block their, their lapel, right? They're going to like start like this, like don't grab my, do you have ways to beat that or you don't care and you just grab the, the front arm and then work when they expose or? Yeah, typically you don't care only because um, if you can't get to it, it's fine. I'll go two on one. I mean, if I put my hands on you, you have to react. So they can only do this for so long until both your hands are on. And then if they're still here, you can throw them. So I, I'll try to put them in another position knowing that I'm going to switch to the grip I want after they react. Um, and you can also, a lot of people that are standing here, I can also use natural balance. Um, if she's blocking this grip and she has this hand on and I can't get to it, right, if I move, just a simple slap the arm and pull, their body has to come up because when you're off balance, you're, that's how you gain your balance is you pull your hands up. So it's just kind of using your own natural instincts against them. I could, I could listen to you talk all day, but I think there's more questions. <laughs> Go ahead. I can. All right. I'm, I'm gonna...
I'm, I'm going to ask you to do that one more time, please, if you don't mind. <laughs> okay. You so the way I usually teach it in uh, clinics is like um, Karate Kid, where he paints the fence, right? Where he breaks his rib. Okay. So you can either do this if they're blocking or also if they're keeping that hand back. Because like I said, I want you to have two hands on. They know that they're either going to keep it back or they're just keep it here. So I can't grab. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to break my wrist one way and then like a whip, I'm going to go the other way. And at the same time, I'm going to hit my own arm. And it's a violent move. It's not a, if I go, if I'm here and I go easy, it's, it's not going to evoke that reaction. But if I go, okay, so it's just like, again, a whip, you're going one way and on the way back, it doesn't matter where you hit, but you have to have some, some ump. Now what you can't do is turn your body too far. Okay, so I can't go too far into it where I'm here because they're gonna get the top grip. So I still have to, like a lot of movements, boom, I'm here and I'm right back forward. Right back forward, okay? That's awesome. I'm sure I'm not gonna look as smooth when I try that for the first time in my first roll back after the quarantine. Uh, Professor James is asking, what, in your opinion, what's the biggest difference between the training methodology of judo and jujitsu? Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if there is very much difference to be honest with you. Um, I mean, we do, we do. And well, well, I guess, let me back up. I guess it depends on the athlete, obviously. Um, but my end game is to put you down, <laughs> you know, finish the match as quickly as possible, impose my will against you and break you. And, and not in a bad way. Like I said, I, like, you know, Bowie said, I don't want, we don't want to hurt anybody. Um, but I want to do it as efficiently as possible. And that's why I like judo. It's not a strength game. It's not two Goliaths going at it. I can use strength. And that's why I love jujitsu too, because you're not in there using your muscles the whole time. It's more like a chess match. And that's very much what judo is. It's, uh, you know, using my, my strengths versus your weaknesses, um, using my brain a little bit to out thank you. I've seen a lot of great judo players lose to guys that were terrible because they got out, you know, he out think, thunk, out thunk, <laughs> out thought him and, and outworked him, right? So that's what I love about it is anybody can win on any day. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to go about it. So, if, you know, I can either learn from anybody, which is cool. How's the intensity in a judo room compared to, uh, for instance, in a wrestling room, super high intensity, big grind, jujitsu is more, you know, uh, how, where does judo fall in there? Um, local, local wise, not very crazy. Our, we don't have a big feeder program. We only have about 20,000 people doing judo versus like France it has a million. Um, but once you get to the, I, I was all, I moved out here for the training center. Um, and we had top five in each division and it was rough. Yeah, it was definitely, you know, you came to bring it <laughs> every night and that was how you got better. I, I was the younger guy in the group. So, you know, that's where I equate my success to was getting beat up every day. And then also competing as much as possible. You know, there's no ego. I don't want to go fight at this local tournament because I'm an Olympian and I may lose, right? It's the mentality you have in the dojo is I'm fighting everybody with the same intensity you know, to get better. I have my own goals every single night. And even if I get thrown, but I attain my goals of movement or grips or whatever it is, I'm getting better, slowly getting better. Because that's all that matters when you make it to the Olympic Games or wherever it is, it's your, it's your highest point. But you never stop learning. You know, that's the cool part. That's awesome, Ryan. I am so excited to try out some of these moves myself when we get back to rolling. Super awesome stuff. Um, I'm just as excited as, as Professor Buyu, um, and uh, thank you so much for sharing that with us. I'll turn you over to Professor Tom for closing remarks, and we well, really Nathan, appreciate it. Um, Nathan, I think he interpreted what Matt's uh, thing was. Nathan, can you just unmute and go ahead and, and maybe ask that question? Yeah, <clears throat> I think what Matt was trying to ask was when you have your grips and the opponent basically goes the other way or puts you out of position or your grips aren't quite right. What do the sweeps look like at that point? Sweep options, switching your stance and attacking the other side, that dynamic. Perfect. Um, 
my thinking is different than a lot of people. I can throw left and I can throw right, but you'll never. And that's a great point. I'm glad you said that because I'm either a lefty or I'm a righty. And the reason being is footwork has a lot to do with your grips. So if I have my left foot forward, but I'm gripped right side, I'm weak because, you know, I'll kind of show you what I mean. So if I'm a lefty and she's a righty, and if I have my right hand on the lapel instead of the left, her natural movement to throw me is to turn right. So I don't have as much to block her with. So footwork and grips correlate very much. So you'll hardly ever see me switch left and right, making my opponent do that unless I want to. I don't want to do it to react. I'm just going to move to a different position. Okay, so if, like you said, if I'm here and I step and she doesn't do what I want her to do, right, then I'm going to start moving backwards. I'm going to start going here. I'm going to push and pull, but I'm never going to switch to the other side with that same grip because then I'm vulnerable to attack without my hands being in the right position. So great question because starting out, um, I've been doing it for 30 years. Starting out is a little bit different because you're not always going to be in optimal positions or have your hands in the right spot. But you're going to be more athletic if you're always in, like snowboarding. If you're goofy foot, switch to the other side and it feels weird, right? You're not used to it. Kind of the same idea with judo. You, know, you don't want to switch unless it's your idea. You want to set, throw, set up a throw to the other side. So once you get your hands set, whichever uh, way you are, change your feet and attack the, from the correct angle at that point. Pretty much. And I pick that. So your right foot's, if you're more comfortable throwing, like you throw a baseball, that's usually what I say. Um, if I'm do, doing a judo throw, like a sanagi, if I throw a baseball righty, that's where my core and my body are used to turning. Lefty feels weird to me. So I'm always going to start with my right foot forward. That's probably the easy way. There's, there's other indicators, but that's going to be the easiest way. And then from there, since my right foot's forward, my right hand's going lapel, left hand on the sleeve. Awesome. Thank you. Very well. Well, if anybody ever has any questions, man, I'm always here. So I'm, I'm available to everybody at any time. Um, we can do Zoom calls. We can do whatever. But I'm just excited to work with everybody. Um, one more. Greg Churchley has a question. He says, do your hands lead the feet then? So, so or like you said, uh, you have your, say, your right foot back, your left foot's yep. front. You want your front hand to be the first grip on the, on the lapel and then your back hand for the sleeve. Now, do you, do you strictly do that even if they're opposite of you, or do you grab at the sleeve first, or do you care? Great question. So um, we do have gripping sequences, uh, same side versus opposite side. And typically, if it's we're both have our right foot forward, you always want to go for the sleeve first. Because again, if I go for the, this lapel first and she turns to the right to throw, I don't have anything on to block this shoulder. So, and she's going to do the same to me. My natural way is to turn right. So the first thing we're both going to do is fight for this sleeve. Once I get the sleeve, now I can, so even if she tries to turn and throw, she can't turn. Okay. Now, if it's the opposite side, uh, <laughs> right. if I'm left foot and she's right foot, and I go for the sleeve, her natural way to turn is that one. So she's going to throw me. So now I go for the lapel first. So if it's opposite side, you go for lapel first. Then sleeve, if both your right feet are forward or left, you go for the sleeve first, lapel. I know it's a lot to remember. Um, so I don't expect everybody to just come out and be gripping machines, but there's a few drills that we can go over, just simple things. Cause that's, I'm, I'll tell you what, the best judo players in the world are the best grippers by far. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'm gonna have to go back. I'm gonna watch that. Make all of you guys maybe on, I'm gonna put this on YouTube in the next day or two. So that, that alone, if you can remind me when we do open back up, just yep. to do that, just so that people get used to which side and which grip first is, is huge. Because that's something that I personally never really paid attention to. I'm like, I'll grab that. It's right. there, I'll grab that. And then I just work with what I got. Um, so maybe that's why I'm getting chucked around. Um, <laughs> I don't wanna show you, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, um, and then so my last question, um, is so in jujitsu kind of when we go rough and you have two guys that refuse to, to pull guard 
is we do like this shaking a trying to dry a towel right yeah. and i see that you do this side to side do you guys do that as well is that something that you incorporate we do yeah um and again it's that natural reaction it's the especially guys man we have that machismo you know so a lot of times i won't do a quick motion you can um but i'll do a stronger where i hold you down and then you show me how strong you are and you pull back up and I enter into my throat. Um, you can do the, it, it's done, but I like to do mine a little bit slower because then he feels like it's his idea. Instead of, when, when I start doing this, they start to tense up and it's hard for me to get in a lot. So if I can do it slower and then I release and step in and throw. Yeah, good question. That's an excellent setup. Anybody else have any other questions? Because, man, I could talk to Ryan all day about this. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed. I love it. I, I, I think you're fantastic in the way that you explain it. So it, it really, like, you're like Neil deGrasse Tyson. You take something very complicated, you dumb it down for me. So I appreciate that. <laughs> me too. <laughs> make something so complicated that you spent your whole life perfecting, and then you make it easy enough for us, you know, not as smart people to understand. So I appreciate that a lot. Uh, guys, man. Uh, yeah, so this is good stuff. And Nacho's asking, uh, is are you holding the shoulder when you did the fireman's carry? Oh, so he never got he never saw that. So your first grip on the shoulder, you that that swim through and and the collar, you leave that grip. Yes, yeah, because that creates tension on the shoulder. Okay. Again, most important is you're going to pull them off balance and extend this arm. Once I come underneath, I'm tilting this up and I'm tur turning this down because there should be tension on this shoulder. Okay, because again, I'm going one way to bring her back the other way. Okay, and if it's loose, she's going to crunch me down. So if I'm here and I don't have it tight and I go in here, she's going to pancake on top of me and hurt. So always, before you, if you don't have this motion and this grip, don't do it, okay? But you got to have that tautness to be able to, to turn. And just so you know, he's rubbing my armpit raw. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, um, Cooch was asking that tornado throw that, that I use that's kind of similar to yours. So yeah, Cooch, the grips are exactly the same. I do exactly the same thing. I just drop all the way through and spin through. But but I love this as an as an alternate. So whatever whatever you guys feel comfortable with, man, I'm I'm all about it. When I started using the tornado you showed with that same grip, um, for people that have that leg back, mm -hmm. so if they don't have that front foot back and I can't knock it out of the way, is that's when you tornado. So if their front foot's forward, you can fireman. If their front foot's back gives you space to tornado underneath. You, I mean, I never learned that until you showed me, so that was awesome. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Anybody else, anybody else? I, I'm, I'm, this is a lot to take in from me. I'm loving this, and Buyu too. And, and Amir, so, so we talked about this, Buyu, before you got here is, we gotta get Ryan, oh, maybe you were here, uh, Ryan out to Michigan. Uh, to, to help him train some of the police officer stuff. And because that, that grip, that chest grip, people grab you, you're trying to grab them, right to to uh secure them and arrest or whatever the thing is that position is very common right that that chest and arm grip you're trying to get control and grips and you're not going to wrestle them you're not going to i mean maybe but ideally not shoot on them right. so that that's going to happen soon um any other questions guys before we before we finish this up i just want to say okay, thank, you, thank you ryan that was a uh, great information like can't wait to go back to the mats starting to drill and you keep things simple something that's very complicated like tom said um i'm very humble to be able to see this and healthy to be able to practice this like i can't wait to be on the match i think it's a one of the greatest importance uh have some judo on your jiu-jitsu game um yes the chat is about jiu-jitsu the chat is made for jiu-jitsu from people but I am forever agree that if you don't know one takedown in your five, in your eight, 10, 12, 20 years of practicing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you, you are missing a point. You're missing something, you know? Oh, but I can just pull guard. I say, yeah, 
only takes the fastest guy to tip your front and they get the two points ahead of you and manipulate your game. Only take the two seconds, the guy, or one second or half a second, the guy grabs your leg before you put your butt down and then you're two points ahead and then he can manage the fight. So I just want to say thank you to you and Mrs. Resser, like to be here on the show, on the TV, you know, or whatever we call this, uh, get together, you know. Uh, thank you very much. Of course, my pleasure. Um, and I think the biggest thing anybody can take away from this is Every, nobody likes to get thrown. And oh, that's yeah. Why, and that's why a lot of MMA and UFC or, you know, BJJ, a lot of gyms don't train it because people get hurt. But it's because they don't embrace it, right? Learn how to fall. Let some people throw you, you know, easily. You take care of your partners. You don't break your toys like Tom always says. But the more you do it, the less you're scared of it, right? And it opens up a whole new world because now you don't care what the guy tries because I've been thrown before right? And I can react to it. And that's the biggest piece. Just go try it. Just like, you know, I don't like trying a lot of stuff that Tom shows and I have no clue what it is. And I'm like, man, this is complicated. But and once I get in and do it, then it's easy. You know, so yeah, just give it a shot. Uh, Nacho, you, you were asking a question I'm not quite understanding. Can you unmute and maybe ask him? So I know, Ryan, we talked about it a little bit the other day when we were standing on a roof, but can you quickly show, and it doesn't have to be with the tools or whatever, but the, uh, the drill that you can do for the throw when, and we've done it in the gym before when we had the rubber bands up and we were spinning, keeping the motion. Is there a proper way to do that? Be being home quarantined and everything else. There, there's actually two ways. So I'll show you one with the band, which you can actually engage your core and you can get the foot moving like you're supposed to. Um, but when I was coming up, if you really want to strengthen those muscles, we had a big gi bag. And you can use it on your dummy if he's heavy enough. Big gi bag, like a big old rock, and we would sweep it down the mat. Boom, boom. I mean, so you don't need anything super heavy, 10, 15 pounds. But once you get the motion of your, you know, your toes sliding across the floor, leaning your head back, then once you start to sweep something heavy, you start to build up those, those, that, those core muscles, the leg muscles, the hip flexors, right? And that's the biggest piece because even though it's timing, you can be a little bit off with your timing and make up for it with pure muscle, right? You know, when you're stepping in. Um, so for bands, and I know we said it's like turning a car, but it's hard to do it with bands. So instead, we're going to focus on our core and our arms to get them off balance because you can't do anything in judo without first getting them off balance. Okay. So I'm going to stand in my right stance. Okay. She's going to hold the bands. And from here, my arms are just going to pull down towards this leg okay and i'm going to turn my core my belly button towards you guys turn my core okay because that's the natural reaction the natural motion of a foot sweep okay so as i step back and open up my leg okay pinky your toes to the mat and sweep okay i can do the other side same thing you should really do both so you can build up both sides you never know when they're going to it's going to sweep. You can also do, I can grab here with both and I can slide to the left. Okay, slide. Slide to the other side. Okay, or with your dummy. I, 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 mine's not as good as Tom's. My head fell off, but okay, same motion we just did. You hold up your dummy, step across. Sweep for timing, or you can sweep them across the floor, okay? Sweep across the floor. You can even use your couch. I can sweep the side of my couch, okay? And you got to remember, it's the bottom of your foot. I don't want, it's never your inside of your ankle bone. It's always the bottom of that foot, so if I want to sweep the side of the couch, I can do it 100 times. We're building that up. Sound good? That's awesome. Thank you. Man, so if, for everybody, uh, like we said, this is a, a jujitsu forum thing. However, we all have to remember that judo and jujitsu share the same father, right? The same grandfather. So they came from the same place. We just chose different things to, to 
focus on, if you would, um, ground versus standing, but they're related. They're, they're the same to me, you know? Um, the Nawaza for these guys, is, you know, is just, you know, it's still part of theirs. They took, you know, maybe 10% into ground and 90% standing, and we just did the inverse. And so I think they're super complimentary, very, very important to know both. I, I would never give somebody a black belt that is not at least somewhat comfortable in doing takedowns and taking falls and things like that. That part is, is still very important to me because I think it's important because my jujitsu for me is self-defense, not phony pretend self-defense, but like real fighting self-defense. And I think just like Amir said, hands on somebody, I'm not going to sit on the floor. You know what I mean? I need to know and feel and be comfortable with a, a resisting person standing just like I am on the ground. So I think it's just as important uh, here. And man, I can't tell you how, how grateful I am for Lauren, especially, and a little bit for Ryan uh, <laughs> to, to be here and, and share with this, us guys. So thank you both so, so, so much. I can't even tell you. Listen, honest to God, I've never seen Buyu more happy. We've had countless people on here and I've never seen like so much glow in his face uh, from this. So, so guys, this is, this is amazing. Thank you guys. Thank you for having us. This is great for us. We get to meet up on each other for a while. So. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Well, I appreciate you guys. And thanks everybody else for coming and sharing this with us. You guys have no idea how much of an advantage it is for you to just have this little bit of knowledge and, and extra stuff. Because when the black belts are getting excited for stuff, you're like, eh, this is awesome. Then you know it's good stuff, man. So this is really cool. It's, Thank you guys. All right. And I'm going to put it on YouTube so that, cause there's stuff that I'm going to have to go back and watch again. You, you covered so many things. It's, it's crazy. Cool. All right. Guys. Have a great evening. Thank you everybody. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank, Thank you very you much. Guys. Thank you so much. Thanks guys. Thank, Thank you, you all.